Welcome to the ADHD Women's Wellbeing Podcast. I'm Kate Moore Youssef, and I'm a wellbeing and lifestyle coach, EFT practitioner, mum to four kids, and passionate about helping more women to understand and accept their amazing ADHD brains. After speaking to many women just like me, and probably you, I know there is a need for more health and lifestyle support for women newly diagnosed with ADHD. In these conversations, you'll learn from insightful guests, hear new findings and discover powerful perspectives and lifestyle tools to enable you to live your most fulfilled, calm and purposeful life wherever you are on your ADHD journey. Here's today's episode. So hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the ADHD Women's Wellbeing Podcast. I'm Kate Moore Youssef, I'm your host, and I am welcoming you to a new series. And today it's just a quick, short solo episode from me, really just kind of checking back in and um, explaining why we had a little bit of a break. But I really felt this call after the summer Obviously, we'd had all the the reruns of the different episodes, all the fantastic guest episodes from over the series, and I really enjoyed reflecting back and listening to those. And it made me realise that actually listening back, I needed to take some of my own advice, and I definitely ploughed a lot of um, hard work into I'd say the last um, quarter of work where I launched the ADHD Women's Wellbeing Hormone Series, put lots of effort and really gave that a push because I felt so strongly about helping more women advocate for themselves, create more awareness around ADHD and hormones. And I'm still working on that behind the scenes. And I am interviewing new experts and specialists So I knew that there's something had to give. And over the summer I was working while I was away and I just felt this this calling for more space and giving myself a bit of um, some freedom to explore and see what felt good. And as much as I love the podcast, it can be a huge, you know, drain on my time. However, it, it never occurs to me to finish the podcast. It always like it's always there. It's always driving me because there's so many topics of conversation that still haven't been explored yet and topics of conversation that people message me about. And I can't wait to share the next series with you with lots of new um, guests, insights, totally different areas that I've not discussed yet. So I'm really excited to bring that to you. But actually on today, I'm recording this on the eve of what is probably the most auspicious day in the Jewish calendar. It's Yom Kippur. Now I am Jewish, but I'm not a religious Jew, but I'm very spiritual, observant um, of traditions. And the tradition or the the rule for Yom Kippur is to fast. And that's a 25 hour fast. And during this, this time between Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year, the day of reflection, and we go into the sort of day of atonement with Yom Kippur, where we really have an opportunity to press pause and reflect back on our year and the intentions and the choices that we made and reflecting on forgiveness on ourselves, but for other people and what went well for us, what was fantastic, what we want to harness more of and what didn't go so well and what perhaps we are willing to release and let go of. And even though we have this in the Jewish calendar every single year, it's an amazing opportunity for anybody in this time, you know, with the autumn equinox that's just happened, as we are stepping more towards winter, where there is this sort of natural shedding and releasing in nature, but also for ourselves, what we can sort of go into almost like hiding, hibernating with the essentials, what really motivates us, what really matters to us. And I'm using this opportunity right now to reflect on all the ways that I have been a person, a wife, a mother, a coach, you know, working in this field, guiding lots of people, supporting lots of people, and how I can carry on doing that with more intention and more potential and more possibilities and opportunities, but also with the aspect of caring for myself and looking out for my own energy and moving forwards into this, what I would consider this new year, this new chapter, but also stepping into autumn and winter and really understanding my energy levels as well, the cycle that we have 
with the seasons and stripping things back a little bit. And I wonder if you perhaps could do the same using this opportunity to reflect and to look back over the past few months and really notice what has worked for you, where your energy has really blossomed, where you have felt good, where you felt most authentic, and also where you have that awareness of what wasn't serving you, what people, what things, what types of work, what situations that you'd been put yourself in that are no longer serving you. So we have to kind of go back to our bodies always. I know it's very easy with our ADHD brains to go into our mind and catastrophize and um, work from a fear-based mode and say, well, I can't let go of this and I can't do that. I can't see this person because this, this, and that will happen. And we go into all the um, what-if scenarios, which as we know, are us just future tripping, anxiety, catastrophizing, ruminating, which potentially causes us huge amounts of stress and really impacts our nervous system. We're then operating from a sympathetic nervous system and we have to be able to learn how to ground ourselves back and find new ways and new techniques to um, come back into that parasympathetic nervous system. So I just want to be able to um, just bring this to your awareness, just allow yourself to notice and notice this without judgment, without looking back at your past self this past year and say, I should have done it like this way, or there's resentment, or there's anger, or perhaps just kind of annoyance. And this is an opportunity for lots of self-compassion, lots of self-forgiveness and say, well, I didn't know that then, but I know this now. And now with my new awareness, and maybe you have um, had coaching yourself, or maybe you've watched different workshops, or you've had a time of self evolvement and self-growth, and you feel like you're in an expansive time where you are able to recognize where you are right now, this sort of present state, and see where you want to be in a few more months' time. And a really nice way of doing this is just writing things down, is really just offering yourself a bit of space and saying, you know, what could I change? What's within my control right now? What feels good for me to change? what new habits or what can I let go of? What can I release? What can I shed? That doesn't feel like it's going to kind of send my nervous system into a spiral. And where can I step into more freedom and autonomy and more space and more opportunity to, to expand and feel good without operating from a place of fear or anxiety or worry about all the things that potentially could go wrong? And I'm saying this from a place of understanding and compassion and knowing because I, my default is to go into the what if catastrophization and be 10 steps ahead and shut the whole thing down because I've already planned the whole thing that could potentially go wrong. And I just say no. But as I have done lots of work on myself and all the training and genuine sort of just curiosity as to how I can expand myself and keep moving forward and learning, I recognize that there is just nothing, there's nothing good comes from worrying and creating all sorts of stories of all the things that potentially won't work and actually giving space and time and curiosity so that all the things that could work. So maybe you just need a bit of space. Maybe you just need a blank page. Maybe you need just a day, a walk, a bath, chat with a friend, anything just to allow you to have a reset, just to give you that reset button of what am I ready to change? How can I step more into that place of service? Who do I want to be helping? How do I want to show up? How do I want to model myself to the people around me, my family, my kids? What am I able to um, to do within my control, my capacity right now? And we just keep working from that place. I don't know if this would have gone into a bit of a coaching session, but it just feels really poignant to be able to sort of say this as I reflect back on my year and all the things that I have achieved and where I have potentially put my validation, my external validation on my productivity, maybe where I've overworked, where I felt burnt out, where I've overcommitted, where I've not said no when I've wanted to, when I've agreed to things that I didn't want to do. And we are all going to do this, no matter how 
enlightened, educated, aware we are, we are constantly going to be navigating the next level, the next level. And we're always going to be um, shown, we're going to be given lessons and we're going to be given lessons that are annoying and hard and difficult and uh, uncomfortable. And it's that riding that discomfort is when we come out the other side, we kind of go, okay, now I understand. I'm not going to do that again. So I'm riding this one with you and I'm looking back at all the discomfort and all the areas of this year where I have learned from and I'm going to hopefully move forwards with maybe some new awareness and I'm sure I'm going to be making lots more mistakes and I'm going to have boundary issues and I'm going to look back and think, why didn't I give myself that compassion? Why didn't I speak to myself like I would if I was speaking to one of my clients? Why am I not giving myself the same advice as I would on the podcast? All those different things. But it's, um, I think, especially on this neurodivergent journey that we're on, uh, where we're just understanding, we're just understanding what is making our brains tick, why we're doing the things that we are, why we have historically gone round in circles and cycles and not been able to break certain patterns. And then begin to open our eyes and have this awareness, whether it's with regards to our health, our well-being, our lifestyle, our nutrition, our mindset, our mental health, um, maybe it's to do with our hormones and perimenopause. There are so many different facets and different situations that we're going to hit, that we're going to find ourselves in, that we're going to have to make choices and we're going to have to make more intentional choices and be able to um, equip ourselves with the resilience to move through those difficult times. So please do listen back to any of the episodes that resonate with you, because there is a lot of conversations around this and bolstering ourselves with different tools and practical ways and um, just anything that we can grasp that feels good to us in the moment. And remember with us as women, we have these cycles and different parts, times of our month, where certain things are going to feel they're really going to resonate and certain times it's really not and it's accepting that so as I'm going to bring this episode to a close look out for a brand new episode I'm really excited for this one coming up in a couple of days so make sure if you don't follow the podcast please um, hit the subscribe and follow button make sure you are following me on um, my newsletter because I have a couple of exciting events coming up I wanted to let you know about um, a brand new event I've not even started to publicize it yet with the incredible Sari Solden so if you um, are not familiar with Sari. Sari is a, an author, an expert, and she has had over 35 years as a therapist for neurodivergent women with her emphasis on radical acceptance. Um, her book, Women with ADHD and a Radical Guide for Women with ADHD are bestsellers, um, Bibles for anyone who are um, finally understanding themselves through this neurodivergent lens. And I'm going to be doing an evening with her on Thursday, the 19th of October, it's going to be 7 p.m. UK time. So if you head to the show notes of this episode, there will be a link to buy tickets. And even if you can't make the actual live event, I do urge you to, because on the live event, we're going to be opening up the floor to questions. We're going to save some time. And if you have ever wanted to ask Sari questions, if there's anything there that you would love to discuss or um, ask her. And for 35 years of experience, now is the time. But if you can't make it live with the cost of the, the ticket, we will send you the recording. And we will be giving you also an exclusive PDF with excerpts from her brand new edition of Journeys Through Adulthood. So that's ADD hood, adulthood. So that's the Thursday, the 19th of October. And also, if you head to my website, you are going to get an update of my brand new four-part workshop all about regulating the ADHD nervous system. And this is based on the teachings of Deb Danner, who I did a five-day incredible live course with. She is a polyvagal expert. She understands the nervous system, regulating and calming the nervous system like no other. Her books are renowned globally. I was able to learn with her, but see it through the neurodivergent lens and really understand how we can use the polyvagal teachings 
but understand it from specifically for women with ADHD. So it's quite niche, but if you have noticed that you have always lived in this very sort of anxious, hypervigilant state where you are always feeling like you're never quite settled and um, there's something around the corner and you would love to learn ways of calming and soothing and stepping into more of the parasympathetic nervous system, which is a more our rest and digest and move away from our fight or flight nervous system, then this workshop series will really be, I think, very beneficial We are only opening, well, I am only opening this up to 15 people because I really want this to be interactive and a a safe space. I want it to be a space where we can talk, we can share. So it's 15 spaces and I'm going to put all the details on my website and the link will be that in the show notes as well. And lastly, the ADHD Women's Hormone Series. I can't believe how many people have bought it. Honestly, I've been blown away. We had recent um, additions from Dr. Rachel Gao. She is a specific um, nutritional um, psychiatrist, uh, therapist, nutritional therapist. She's written an incredible book about nutrition and ADHD, about brain food, mood boosting food. And she is incredibly knowledgeable about really ensuring that we eat the right nutrients for our brain. And so we have um, lots of recipes from her and really focusing on sort of hormones as well. So understanding what certain foods we should be eating um, to help balance our hormones and boost our mood and help our brain. And we've also got um, the ADHD midwife, Laura Spence, who is talking all about um, pre- postpartum, how to help ourselves, how to support ourselves, um, also during pregnancy as well. So it's a really interesting conversation about our hormones in this part of our life as well, but essentially also postpartum and understanding there is a connection between postpartum depression, postnatal depression and ADHD or ADHD and autism. So just keep an eye on that. We have got, I'm very excited. We also have um, another edition coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. That was a fantastic conversation with Kate Shepherd Cohen, and she has created incredible menstrual cycle support resources to really help us track our cycle so we can understand where we are with our mood with a specific understanding of neurodivergence as well. So I'm trying to bring to you as many resources as I can in the ADHD hormone series so you can bolster yourself, your knowledge, advocate for yourself, but also if you have children going through this or Uh, pupils or anyone that you work with that really needs to understand this connection between hormones and ADHD. So any of this is confusing. I've given you lots of, lots of information here. Head to my website. All the information will be there. It's adhdwomenswellbeing.co.uk. So I will see you in a few days for our first episode back. I'm so excited and I will see you all soon. Take care. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. I hope you found what you were looking for in this conversation and it has helped guide you towards some further self-healing, self-exploration and most importantly, self-acceptance. And if you have enjoyed this conversation and would like to experience more of my work, such as access to exclusive live workshops and opportunities for group coaching sessions, connecting with other like-minded women, and a general feeling of belonging, please come and check out my monthly membership, the ADHD Women's Wellbeing Collective. I've made it as affordable as possible, and I offer you lots of resources and opportunities for connection and support from other women all around the world being diagnosed with ADHD later on in life. I'd absolutely love to see you there. All the details are in this episode's show notes or on my website, adhdwomenswellbeing.co.uk. See you in the next episode.